Welcome to this episode of YouTube where I've entitled it Leaves Are Going Fast and that's what we're seeing here is cooler temperatures, a little bit of rainy, windy weather that's uh, knocking the leaves off the trees, giving people a little more visibility to see the wolves and certainly the wolves are picking up activity. We're going from more of a nocturnal summer exhibit to more of a diurnal winter exhibit and that means active during the daytime. So the big questions is uh, certainly the dominant rank order issues. Uh, Luna is taking the lead on trying to assert a little bit of dominance over Denali. And it's interesting because sometimes it's hard to tell who's on who. And again, we'll have Bolts come in thinking that he's going to gain a little status in Denali, but he actually is taking probably a little bit of Luna revenge uh, from all those months and now two years of being Luna's pup mate. He comes in and tries to get a little dominance over Luna. Of course, Aiden, pack leader, he's going to kind of settle it all in and he's going to show Denali some status and then kind of calm everybody down with a little bit of assertive posturing. And uh, it doesn't last very long. Like I say, the winter dominance will pick up a little bit closer to winter, but for the most part, that's just posturing and really the dominance is designed to probably alleviate a lot more conflict because everybody knows their place because they ritualize these little bouts of status. Uh, but for the most part, wolves are really investigative in their nature. They like to smell things, and here we are in the uh, upper pond where certainly some minnows may be a victim to the wolves uh, as the fish start to, from the summer season, start to kind of congregate towards the upper pond. And that's what Bolt has, Bolt has there as a minnow, and he's going to proceed to scent roll on it. We will be draining the pond uh, for the next webinar uh, as a stimulus for the wolves. Uh, we always drain the pond as the temperatures cool down here. We obviously don't keep water running year-round when we have temperatures significantly below zero. So as part of the webinar, we've decided to show you what it means to take care of a exhibit. Here's a little situation that we always want to be aware of bolts got a little bit leery of my camera lens and one of the things when I'm filming for YouTube I have to be cautious the camera and the eye of the camera can be perceived as being a little bit dominant I mean wolves use direct eye contact to, to dominate each other and so when we're in there with the camera lens we have to be very careful if we're too close and certainly kind of staring right at them and you could see the response of bulls there he caught a glimpse of the camera and uh, it intimidated him a little bit so it's something that while we want to get film and we want to have footage, we also want to be mindful of the wolves' impact on their behavior. So, like I say, you see Bolt's doing a little more scent rolling over there. That's that minnow, and uh, these minnows are short-lived. Uh, we put them in in July to help with the algae situation, but certainly as the temperatures cool um, and, and oxygen changes within the pond, uh, we find some mortality of those short-lived species of minnows. And certainly the wolves like to fish. They like to catch fish. And so even though wolves in the wild here in northern Minnesota are not usually fish catchers like they are in British Columbia, the wolves here in captivity uh, enjoy the stimulus. So Luna's kind of kind of coming over and checking that out. So it's a good distraction. It keeps uh, them, again, focused on something other than each other. But for the most part, we're having some really relaxing days. And sunny days are good. And the other thing I'm going to be doing for the webinar is also put their first winter straw or winter cover hay into the exhibit. They love that. I mean, lying in the sun on a warm bed of straw or warm bed of hay is one of the best things that they uh, seem to enjoy in the fall. So Grizzer, he's uh, got his own kind of comfortable places to lie down here. He is kind of digs some little holes with really interesting formations of roots and logs around them that gives him a little bit of, you know, like almost like an arm armrest and uh, makes a little a place for him to, to rest and one thing he has not been on camera as much on the webcams because he's been kind of focused towards the front of the exhibit and I'm not sure why that is uh, there's certainly some things going on in the front of the exhibit that's causing him to be focused there we have been bringing Tina up and Tina is uh, again my grandson's dog and is socialized to Grizzer through the fence and so Grizzer a lot of times lies down on the edge where Tina's going to be, and that's going to be his focus to keep him towards the front. Uh, Tina 
I can say is not Oscar. Oscar was a dog that was that raised uh, Luna and Bolt. But Tina is a good distraction, and um, Grizzer most of the time rolls over her for her. Sometimes just kind of rolls his eyes at her because she's a dog with no tail, who's kind of a little bit of a interesting distraction. I would just put it that that way, and certainly keeps him focused. But Luna and Bolts have a very strong attraction to dogs because they, again, spent the majority of their summer when they were pups with Oscar the dog. And so that makes them certainly a little more keyed in, a little more social. And that's where you heard the whining from Luna. Um, and Bolts, too. He, like I said, he had certainly fond memories of uh, being around a dog, wrestling with a dog. And certainly the dog helps keep them a little bit more comfortable if things are a little bit stressful. So we know that there's a lot of stimulus here after hours, and we're always using our surveillance camera and taking our, our time to look through the surveillance video. And if you can watch this pretty closely here, you see the rodents are on the move. And this is a, you can only see it by the, by the kind of the gleam of its eyes as it comes in and out of the den here, searching for food. So we're seeing definitely lots of rodent movement. And uh, Grizzer didn't see this as well, because if you see in this clip, Grizzer in the far right is going to come out of a hole underneath the pond. He uh, has widened out Shadow's uh, under underground den and has been using that as a place to sleep. So we know that ravens also are active throughout the exhibit, and you're going to start seeing a lot more of them on the exhibit camera as the fall in approaches into winter, and Grizzer will chase ravens just like uh, Luna has taken on a raven chasing activity. So it's always good for us to look at the surveillance camera. That'll give us an idea of what we're kind of walking into as well. You know, what kind of a night they had, how they rested. Um, here's Grizzer showing a curl rest, and this is a, a, one of those cooler days when it was raining, and so body temp-wise, he's probably a little bit cooler, and so he's going to do the classic rest, which is walk in a circle, and that's an actual instinctual behavior. They theorize that is a bedding behavior, meaning walking in a circle. You're they're patting down the the grass to be able to <clears throat> to lie down. Grizzer obviously, you know, has a wood chip bed. He doesn't necessarily need to pack it down, but it's still instinctual behavior to rest. And so the curl rest tells us that he's got his tail kind of covering and his he's curled up where his belly is protected, and that tells us that he's probably a little bit cool. And uh, the nice thing about surveillance is we can see how long he sleeps. And sometimes he'll have long bouts where six or seven or eight hours of a continuous sleep where he might move a little bit and rearrange himself and then get up and move. So it's nice for us to be able to have the surveillance cameras. And uh, we can also identify if there's anything that's stressing him out. In this clip here, you're going to see a series of yawning, facial licking, and... Uh, even self-grooming, that is not necessarily a positive thing. Um, as I said before, we've had some wild wolves that are kind of in the backyard, and um, this licking, yawning, kind of a little bit anxious behavior certainly tells us that he may be a little bit stressed um, because of a visitor in the backyard, or it's hard to say. But the nice thing about our surveillance cameras is that we have the opportunity to go look to, at the other pack. We have five surveillance cameras here and we have the ability to go look at the other pack and see if they had any response to anything and that'll often help us to decipher where the source of the stress might be or you know what what may have occurred and like I said when we go in for wolf care we definitely want to know if he had a stressful night because that could impact how he interacts with us so that's kind of the background of the exhibit like I said as we see, we're seeing less leaves uh, more opportunity to see wolves and this is the surveillance cam, which is also the webcam on the east side enclosures. And so hopefully uh, if you're a late night viewer or on the opposite end of the world where you may be viewing in the middle of the day, you may see Grizzer active or resting there. So that's it until we see you next week. Uh, this is Aiden doing an ambush on Luna. As I said, the webinar is going to be October 28th at 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, if you're interested in watching the wolves be a little stimulated by some maintenance activities for the winter, it should be a good time. Certainly, we welcome everyone to join us. It is posted on our website under Programs. You can find us, Wolves to the Web. And again, all you need is a computer and uh, the ability to 
have some speakers to hear some audio. We usually have quite a bit of vocalization and activity going on. So if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you and have a good week.